as we sing that you'll join in with us and give us your energy but we're gonna try and give you our energy too but uh we're just gonna start with in the sanctuary if you know the words join in you know you know do a little shimmy you know the carlton if you're if you're into that sort of thing <laughs> amen hallelujah Lift our hands. like to welcome you to our service of praise. I'd like to invite you to trust God as he is the only one who can turn our mess into a message and trans our, transfer our brokenness into something more beautiful than we can ever imagine. Now, what will you allow him to create from your broken pieces. Are you seeking peace? Then give him your broken pieces. God is a good God, and let us learn to rely on him now more than ever. So let us pray, giving you, Heavenly Father, all the praise and honor. For without you, we are nothing. Father God, you are an awesome God, a God of faith, love, peace, and joy, Father God. Come with us and be with us throughout this morning and through this service, Father God. Have mercy on us, opening our eyes for the message and the guidance that we will receive within the service. Father God, giving you blessings for our youth who is bringing us praise and for our pastor who will bring us the message and all those who are taking part in this service. Father God, I give you thanks for all of you, all what you have done and for how you are blessing us 
and all those who walk through the doors at First Baptist Church. Father God, I give this all to you in your precious holy name. Amen. All right, join me in singing Chosen Generation. We are a chosen generation. We've been called for to show His excellence. All I require for life, God has given me. I know who I am. We are a chosen generation. We've been called for to show His excellence. All I require for life, God has given me. And I know who into the house of the Lord this afternoon and just praise God so many people don't have that privilege and so we really do have to acknowledge that and make sure that we're shouting the name of Jesus from the rooftops each and every day of our life amen not a word you speak is ever wasted not a promise you have left on You were faithful to me through the ages, Jesus, my Emmanuel. 
Sing with me. Not a single taste has disappointed. Not a glimpse of you has fallen short. You go far beyond my expectations. Jesus, Jesus, always more. Today I'm here to do the responsive reading. 
and it's taken from Psalm 51, um, a number of verses. So I would read the white. Please join me in reading the yellow. Oh, give me back my joy again. You have broken me. Now let me rejoice. Do not keep looking at do not keep looking at my sins. Remove the stains of my guilt, creating me a clean heart, O oh God. Renew a loyal spirit within me. Do not banish me from your presence, and don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and make me willing to obey you. Then I will teach your ways to rebels, and they will return to you. Forgive me for shedding blood, O oh God who saves. Then I will joyfully sing of your forgiveness. Unseal my lips, O oh Lord, that my mouth may praise you. You do, you do not desire sacrifice, or else I would offer one. You do not want burnt offering. Let's repeat that. Unseal my lips, O oh Lord, that my mouth may praise you. You do not desire a sacrifice, or I would offer one, and you do not want my burnt offering. This, together, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. These, O oh God, you will not despise. Dear Lord, break me into submission and obedience to your will that my sacrifices will be acceptable unto you. Shalom, amen, and maranatha. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. What wonderful praise we had today from our young people. Isn't that true? Come on, let's worship God with them. Amen. They They've led us in praise and worship. We say thanks be to God. Good to have you today. And how many of you here for the first time? Wave at me a little bit so I can see who you are. It's great to have you in service today. Great to have you in service today. My two brothers uh, from Libenzel Missions, they will uh, enjoy them later on. They're here to do some filming. Uh, just so you know, at the very back of our, of, our, of our sanctuary, we have the ascension of the black Jesus. And they got intrigued by that. You know, remember Daniel Mueller? He was our intern with Zimmerdell, Libenzell Missions. Uh, he's doing some, uh, some television program in Germany, and they're doing a cultural expression. And they thought he remembered that there was a black ascension of Jesus in the front. Now, he forgot about the white Jesus in the, uh, sorry, the back. He forgot about the white Jesus right here. Somebody help me. I need a Chinese Jesus somewhere in the middle, somebody. Come on now. We are... We're in Chinatown, amen. Aren't you glad that Jesus is for all people? So hallelujah, somebody. Amen. He loves us no matter what color we are, no matter where you came from, no matter who you is. God loves you just the way you are. You know why? Because he made you in his special image. Now, I know your mom and dad made you. Maybe they were too black and made a black. Maybe they were black and white like me made a half. Hello, somebody. Maybe they were Indian and maybe they were Chinese and made a mixture. It doesn't matter. But when God knit you in your mother's womb, he put his breath into your bodies. Come on, somebody. Amen. It's God who made you in his image. So we're glad you can come in this wonderful expression of God's kingdom story to us today. So welcome to First Baptist Church for you for the first time. All right. That's Tobias and that's Pastor Strauss. Uh, they are here with us today. We're glad you can join us all day today. All right. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Amen. Let's remind you some announcements briefly. Uh, my name is Wendell Gibbs, but I'm, I'm glad to be a humble servant. But I'm only saying it because the lady before me was my lovely wife, Roselle Gibbs. All right. So just... Give her a little honor as well, for every, behind every good man is a better woman. Somebody say amen. Did you say amen? Come on. I hope the men didn't say amen. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Now, you, you promised me last week you were going to tell somebody Merry Christmas. Who did? Who did? All right, who's lying? The banners are up. We're getting ready. Next week, we're going to have our first advent of hope. And we already started. Glory to God in the highest. And what? Emmanuel, God with us. Somebody say, Merry Christmas. And if you're new with us today, you'll know why. From the time November 1st hits, 
after Halloween, this church, we start to milk it for what it's worth. The next two months, people won't deny you saying, joy to the world, Christ has come. They won't stop you. Don't wait till December 25th. Tell them from now. Tell them Merry Christmas. What the world needs is what? Hope, love, joy, and peace. So keep saying it loud and clear. Amen. And we give God thanks for your live stream. So welcome to those watching us online, those in Sanctuary as well. Uh, we want to say thanks to all our wonderful media team. We keep sometimes not recognizing the work they do, but they're on camera, they're on PowerPoint, they're on live stream, they're on Facebook, YouTube. They're doing praise and worship. They're on sound. Wow. Thank you all so much for the work that you do to help us look well and to praise God also. So join us online if, you are, if you're so desiring, if you can't make it in sanctuary. But remember, you can't worship and fellowship by yourself. Hello, somebody. Who likes to party by themselves? Who gets all dressed up and say, I'm going out to a party, just me, myself, and I? Anybody? But so how come, how come how, well, there, there are some strange people, Joseph, we understand, okay? You know, and I noticed your mom put her hand up too. So it looks like, you know, same company, I understand, okay? But, it, but in reality, we need to fellowship because we are social beings. In fact, God came down in the cool of the day and did what? Fellowship with Adam and Eve, didn't he? He could have left them all by himself. Even God wants our fellowship. He desires our praises, amen? So come on into the sanctuary when you can and join our worship and fellowship. But thank you if you're watching us online as well. A number of ways that we can do uh, giving towards this ministry is uh, we can give through e-transfer, through PayPal, through text to give arrange a pickup or drop it off at the office here. In the front of you, you'll notice there are envelopes. You're free to pick up one of those envelopes, put an offering in there, and put it on the table in the back, all right? Uh, we have not resumed picking up offerings yet since COVID, because I've expressed to my, our congregation, all of you, that we're gonna keep trusting God because he saw us through COVID. He can see us through these times as well, amen? Now, so keep giving online, keep, keep serving and offering God's commands to, to store into his storehouse, but thank you so well. Father, we pray a blessing and all those who give faithfully to this ministry, and those online, those far away, and those in-house, for their faithfulness to follow you in your commands, to bring into your house and give their tithes and their offerings. We are so thankful, Lord, that we can pay our bills and function as a ministry because people are faithful to you. Would you in turn be faithful to them? I pray a blessing on you. For you who are looking for employment, I pray God will open up doors of opportunities for you. For you who can't afford your bills, that God will hold you hostage to your own accountability of making sure you are good stewards of what God gives you, and that he will bring you to a, a restorative place of giving because God in turn will bless you with employment, with finances. I declare God's blessing upon you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for your faithfulness and your giving to us as well. Today we have a family church meeting right after service. We'll stay right here, come a little closer, and we're just going to update you on our finances and where the ministry is at leading up to Christmas season. So stick around. Don't go anywhere if you have to leave. I'll, I'll, I'll say bye to those who are leaving. But I want the family of and members and visitors all can stay. And we'll update you what's happening with the ministry right after service. And I'll entice you even more. You'll stay because we have some nice sandwiches downstairs. All right. So we have a little fellowship afterwards with some beautiful sandwiches that will feed you a little bit. All right. Bible study resumes this coming uh, Wednesday. We are going to be following the Alphas workshop on, on Wednesday evening. Uh, I would invite all of you to join us on our prayer meeting. It's uh, the normal link. All right, just go to the normal link, but we are going to join the Alpha course. The Alpha course on this Wednesday coincides with our same time as Wednesday night prayer meeting. So I want us all to join because the course is teaching us how to relate to this generation, how to speak their lingo and invite them into worship with us and to balance between old and new, uh, tradition and contemporary and yet we maintain the kingdom of God together. So join us this coming Wednesday for a wonderful evening of learning and interacting. For all of us who have teenagers and adults and young children who are growing up in this world, you all need to know how to impress with them in this modern time, all right? And then we had Steel Pan yesterday, just to make mention, you can't join us anymore, it's over and done with. We got about 10 of us learning to play Steel Pan. You might hear us play a song at Christmas. Somebody say, help the pastor and the others, Lord. Hey, don't laugh. The Bible says make a joyful noise. Yeah, we go. We are so going to make a joyful noise that day, I'm telling you. Uh, we, we, we sure are. But we're having a blast. We're learning so much, enjoying the steel pan uh, presentation, and we're looking forward to the next two, uh, this coming Saturday, 9.30 a.m. You all hearing the announcement? 9.30 a.m. Saturday. For those who are in the program, see this coming Saturday, and then December the 9th, 
we'll continue on with the program as well. All right, and next what? It's Christmas, so we're going to start preparing for Christmas. So guess what? We have our, I forgot to put in here, uh, it's, 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 I forgot to put the dates here. Where is it now? Uh, I think I have it twice. So let's just go to the 15th. I don't have it. So the 15th of December is going to be our potluck prayer meeting Bible study night. What we do on that last night, we take a break for Christmas and it's ask the pastor anything and we all bring a potluck on that Wednesday night. Okay, so it's December the 15th. Keep that Wednesday in mind. Wednesday when Bible study, the last one for the break, is going to be downstairs in, our, in the basement as well. So keep that date in mind, okay? And then on the 21st, all right, the seniors, we're going to have a Christmas seniors luncheon at 12 noon right here on the Thursday. All right. Yeah, you kind of have to qualify for it. That's why our wonderful senior brother is telling us right there, okay? What he's saying is, Merry Christmas, y'all. Don't be so uptight. <laughs> All right, so we'll see on the 21st, 12 p.m. We, we, we're calling for 60 plus, okay? So please don't try to sneak in if you're 59. All right, uh, you got to be 60 plus, okay? So we're looking forward to seeing you for that wonderful evening as well, all right? And next week, the last uh, Sunday next week, we're having a workshop for our women's health in, in, uh, with speaker Jennifer Drummond. That's the Elder Gloria's daughter. We're inviting everyone to come, okay? And everyone who comes gets a $10. You now, we did it last year, and we got the $10, and some of you donated it back to the, to the ministry. But uh, we'll have some snacks next week as well. And right after service, we'll start. I'm looking forward to information. Now, it's not just for women. It's for men to understand their importance with your spouse and your parents and your moms and your siblings or sisters, whoever, how we all are engaging in this atmosphere of health. All right, and uh, while I'm on that, let me just remind all of our seniors today uh, when we go to prayer. If you're a senior living on your own, I implore you to get a call button. Get an emergency button. Do not live by yourself if you're a senior without an emergency button. We've had two passes, people have passed away thus far in their homes by themselves over the last two months. I have two more, and I have one coming up next Saturday. This week, I have three funerals. I'm doing one Tuesday, one Thursday, one Friday. Are you getting the message yet? Please, 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 okay? You can easily fall. My good friend, his, his mom, she was uh, 75, getting ready for church, fell in the bathroom, hit her head, and we had the funeral two weeks ago. So if you listen to my voice, talk to us, okay? And help, we'll help you, okay? But don't live alone unless you have somebody with you or you have an emergency button just in case something happens, all right? Please, please, please. That's very important, and we're going to have that talk next week, Sunday, to remind you how important that is, all right? And we got some Christmas programs coming up. Next, on the 9th, is going to be our children's program. Notice they're all gone. They're practicing already. Uh, it's called The Best Gift. So that's going to be the children's cantata coming up on December the 9th, all right? So parents, uncles, aunties, guardians, all of you guys, all right? What did I say? Did I say November? Yeah, uh, yeah there you go. See? It's December 10th? Wow, that's way off. Okay. So it's, it's up and coming. It hasn't passed yet, okay, folks? It, it's up and coming, all right? So it's December the 10th. All right, so looking forward to our children. They were fun last week at our anniversary, weren't they? Yes, they always are. And then the following Sunday is going to be our FBC senior choir. Well, I should say choir in general. There's uh, young and old. <laughs> our FBC choir is Christmas's presentation. Uh, Again, so something was wrong with Pastor's brain a couple nights ago. Yeah, yeah. So it's not past, it's coming. It's December the 16th, all right? Oh, Lord, help me, Jesus. Okay. All right. Uh, Dick, uh, Minister Kevin is not here, but we're going to edit this whole section, okay? To make the pastor look good, all right? But that's all right. December the 17th and December the 10th, all right? Two Sundays in a row. And then Christmas uh, Eve is going to be our Sunday service. That's the 24th. I got that right? December 24th is going to be Christmas Eve, and we're going to have a wonderful candlelight early morning uh, service as well, okay? And then I want to just highlight this for you. We're not going to buy any tickets for you personally, but if you are interested, Queensway, the church on the Queensway is having their Christmas live cantata for Christmas on Friday, December the 8th, Saturday the 9th, and Sunday the 10th. If you want a part of that, uh, look at the dates there, and you can get a flyer if you so desire. But uh, I always encourage you with this one because between Queensway, they put on a real wonderful presentation at Christmas 
and Easter real live. Sometimes they have live animals on stage as well. So you wouldn't want to not miss it if you can go. It's all right. So I promote it for that purpose. All right, go enjoy yourself. And then uh, coming up on the 15th, uh, you heard about the refugees. You heard that one passed away this week in Mississauga. I'm very much close to that, I, um, that discussion with Pastor Eddie at Dominion Church, and they're having a fundraising concert. Uh, they're desiring to raise some funds seriously to try and build an actual shelter for 500 refugees. Wouldn't that be awesome? Yes. Amen. Now, one concert wouldn't do it, and my $10 donation wouldn't do it, but collectively, if we can challenge our leaders, challenge uh, those who are in business, challenge our politicians, maybe we can put something up. It's high time we did. Amen. It's a real, real major issue. So if you are available on the 15th, all right, uh, join them there. And the reason why they're doing it really is a production of, of Christmas, but they want people to actually see what's going on. How would you feel if I was to tell you guys, next week, Sunday, all these pews are going to be gone, and this sanctuary is going to be a bedroom for refugees. That's exactly what Dominion did. And that's exactly what Pilgrim Feast Church did. They converted the sanctuary into a bedroom for over a hundred refugees sleeping on cots and mats and bunk beds. Amazing. And you need to go and see the kingdom of God, the church coming alive to help those. And uh, we're not there yet, but we certainly are supporting it in a very big way. So keep praying, okay? Would you do that for me? For those who are, who are less fortunate uh, on the streets and not have any place of shelter in this cold season, many of you have given coats, have given boots and and, and winter wear, we have, dis we have already taken them all. Some of you brought more today. We'll take them again. They keep wanting more and more because it's the winter season. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I think we've taken over 50 winter coats already. That's amazing with our congregation right here. Thank you so much. Because you sense the need and feel the passion as well. Amen? Well, we'll pray about that later on, but let's continue on. Let's talk about whose birthday it is today, all right? So it's Zevion Creed is, is on the 20th. Don't think I saw him, but he's on the 20th. Uh, Minister Kevin did is on the 24th, and he chose to go away on vacation. Didn't take me with him. Shame on that guy. But uh, happy birthday, Minister Kevin. I think he's watching. Him and his wife are away for the vacation. So happy birthday, Minister Kevin and Zavion. And then Cleopatra Pert is on the 12th. Don't think she's here either. But, uh, why does he say 12th? I'm a little confused there. But uh, anyways, it's on there. But what's the big one is this. Uh, I know Sister Ola went downstairs. Deacon Ola is there, is he here? So they both, oh, he's in the back. Deacon Ola, come and uh, just stand up for your wife. Uh, he's, it's his anniversary on the 25th. Hey, that's coming up on Saturday. Happy anniversary to you both as well. Did I miss a birthday anniversary? Anybody celebrating a birthday this week? Anniversary going once. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. One more time. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Anniversary. <laughs> Amen. Always exciting, right? Happy birthday and happy anniversary. Let's go to prayer time. Let's pray for all the needs that we have going on around us today. Uh, let's sing this wonderful song, Holiness. And today we talk about brokenness. Come, my worship team, come and lead us in this beautiful song. Holiness is what we need. As we sing our next song, let's just bow our hearts and I encourage you to lay any burdens that you have at the feet of Jesus. Amen. The good news is that you do not need to be perfect before you come to him. He actually wants your heart. He requires Praise your brokenness God. and that's when he's able to move. So let's remember this as we stand and sing.
so much. Amen. Amen. Bless our young people. Hallelujah. They are such a model for us today. I can tell you where many young people are right now. And here we have those in church working hard and serving God with us and leading us into worship. Isn't that awesome? We say, to God be the glory. Honestly, to God be the glory. Thank you so much for leading us well today. And we want to remember those who are less fortunate, those who are ill and sick and shot in, those who have gone through surgery and waiting for results. And uh, we got some members who've gone through that this week. Some are still hurting. Uh, sometimes too many to mention, but uh, those who've lost loved ones, that God will be a comfort to them as well. But let's pray for the loss of the world, the loss of those from bombs and wars and poverty and struggling with, with trying to find shelter where this wonderful brother passed away so sadly. Let's remember all those in prayer today. So let's pray for our peace. Let's pray for the peace. You will see my title is Broken Pieces. Broken to pieces. And we always think broken to pieces means a bad thing. It means that it's shattered, of course. But I want to play on the word pieces and talk about the peace of God. We are broken so we can have peace with God and have peace in God. Amen. Put the slide up for me and let's repeat again what we've done the last few Sundays. Just to remind us our responsibility, not just for our own selves, but starting with the world and the Middle East. Amen. So we pray for peace. With me. We pray for peace in the Middle East. We pray for peace in our world. We pray for peace in our nations. We pray for peace in our cities. We pray for peace in our homes. And we pray for peace in our hearts. We pray for the Prince of Peace to come. The only time we'll have true peace is when the Prince of Peace comes and gives us peace. Amen. Bow your hearts in prayer. In the humility of our hearts, we come, Lord. We recognize in our frailty and our brokenness, it's all about you. No one escapes the suffering of this world. In our minds, in our hearts, in our bodies, even in our will, Father. We ask you, Lord, to form us, conform us, and transform us as we just sang about this brokenness, about this holiness, this righteousness, this faithfulness. I come to you, Father, in the name of Jesus today. First, for those who are hurting physically through surgery and calamities of this life in their bodies, Lord. We think of those who are aging with the struggles of, of, of challenges with, with memory, Lord. And we hear the name mental illness and we hear the name Alzheimer's. And Lord, we, none of us will escape, Lord, the reality of what's happening if we don't recognize in this broken world we're living in today. We just pray for healing to flow through our bodies, Lord, whether it's tumors and Alzheimer's, whether it's cancers and whatever likes. In the name of Jesus, you online who are listening right now, I speak healing into your body by the blood of Jesus Christ. By his stripes, you are healed. Whether you're in a sick bed, in a hospital, whether you've just come out, whether you're recovering, whatever the situation might be, I pray you will put your full trust in Almighty God, the healer, the one who can use any means necessary, whether it's doctors, nurses, technology, medication. He can use it all, but he can use his own hands. Lord, lay your hands and touch and deliver, I pray. Even now, Father, from the stresses we face in this life, I speak it into your being right now, your very being, that you will have a clarity of thought, a deep understanding in the spirit, and you'll have power through the spirit in your body to overcome every adversity that you are facing today. I pray for those, Lord, who have lost loved ones and the comfort, Lord, to those who are despaired today from loved ones who have passed on, whether it's through the tragedy of this global war that we're experiencing, Lord. It is a global war because we see protests and unrest happening in every city, in every nation across the world. And Lord, we recognize that we're living in times that you warned us about. Perilous times will come. But you promised us to take courage because you have overcome. You are the Prince of Peace who can give us peace, maybe not in our world, oh God, but you can give us peace in our hearts. You can give us peace in our homes. And we ask for the Prince of Peace to come, so Lord Jesus, 
I pray for the war that you will subside and you will speak to the leaders, O oh God. Speak to the hearts of these dictators, Lord, who is making unilateral decisions against people who have been hurt and killed and murdered, Lord. Bombs blowing up homes, Father. Have mercy, I pray. Whether it's Ukraine, whether it's in the developing countries, in our African countries, Lord, whether it's in China and whether it's in the Middle East, have mercy, I pray. Even right here, Father, we may not see physical wars, but there is warring going on in the spirit against the evil of this world, oh God. Help us to understand the dynamics of what's going on beyond what we see, but what we sense in the spirit as you're moving in this time to wake up the church and wake up those who believe that we can have the hope, the love, the joy, and the peace to speak to our friends and our neighbors and our families and our co-workers, oh God, to know that the Prince of Peace is the only answer to the world's problems today, to the world's war today, to the world's suffering today, to the world's poverty today, to the world's hate and judgment, to the world's racism today. Oh God, have mercy, we pray. And may we be an expression of your love, your grace, and your mercy to whomsoever you put us with, Lord, in this world we live. We just ask, Lord, you will continue to bless not just our church, you'll bless your kingdom, church. Everywhere there are the expression of Jesus Christ is being, Lord, uttered that you'll raise up the army of God across this world to be the ambassadors and the powerful spirit of God to move against the demonic and evil activities that is pervading us, Lord. I pray for the power of Almighty God to move amongst your church. I pray for Pilgrim Feast who's reached out to refugees. I pray for revival time, who started the process. I pray for people's church, who's moving in that direction as well. I pray for Dominion Church International, Lord, who's opened up all their sanctuaries, Lord, to house those who have no shelter. Jesus, you said it in your words. If you do it to the least of these, you've done it unto me. Bless these pastors and these leaders and help us, Lord, if we can't do it ourselves, to find ways to echo support to the great need around us. We pray for our politicians and our leaders across this Canadian continent, this nation, Lord, and across America and the rest of the world, that you will speak to leaders and nations to look up, Lord. Look up and see the salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ in the midst of all that's going on, we pray. Bless First Baptist Church. We just celebrated 197 years, Lord. Let our legacy continue of service to our community. Let our legacy continue so we can grow greater in faith. Let our legacy continue, God, so we can be a blessing to those who will come. Let our legacy continue so we can transform lives for your glory. Not the success of this world, but the success for heaven's bound. For the place you promised that we will go. We thank you, Lord, and we bless you today. Bless those who've come to receive. And I pray a blessing upon you now in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son. In the name of the Holy Spirit, amen. Raise your hands real high. Put your palms to the sky. And say, Lord, I surrender. Lord, I surrender all. So, Father, I just pray your blessing will pour now. Pour that blessing into the palms of these, your children. Me, your child. Pour your blessing into these palms and let it flow, Lord, down into the hands, into our elbows, across our shoulders, oh God. Let the anointing and the power of God move into our bodies from this blessing to flow right up to our brain, Lord, and give us the mind of Christ. Allow the warmth of the Holy Spirit to be sensed now as it moves from your brain all the way down into your lower parts, down to your chest, down to your waist, down to your legs, the thighs and your legs, down through your knees, down into your feet. Do you sense it now? Are you paying attention? Are you focused on God right now? I want God's anointing to be upon you so you can be a blessing to others in this evil world. I want you to feel God's anointing even right now in the name of Jesus. Feel his anointing in the name of Jesus. Let the blessing of God flow all over you in body, mind, soul, and spirit. And I pray that he will prosper you, not for the sake of success, but he'll prosper you in your spirit first so the rest of your body and mind can be prosperous. I declare this blessing upon you now from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. In every aspect of your lives and you're going out and you're coming in, may you take Jesus with you 
and know he will lead you and guide you every step of the way. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, and our soon coming King. Amen. Amen. And amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may have your seats. Nancy's going to come and minister in song for us, all right? And then we'll try to give a word of encouragement to you about this brokenness. How many of you got a crayon? Show me your crayon. How many got a crayon? Everybody got a crayon? How many got a piece of paper? Everybody got a piece of paper? All right, we're going to come back with that, okay? You're going to do something with that very shortly, okay? Nancy, great to have you. Bless us, we pray. Hallelujah. Praise God. Uh, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Nancy. <laughs> to all of you. Um, <clears throat> um, I'd want to dedicate an a cappella song to you, my Lord and Savior. I'd like to thank you for seeing me through a difficult period in my life, for holding my hand, answering my prayers, and never letting me go, just as you promised. What a faithful God you are. Thank you for being my light, my strength, and my hope. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. More than anything else in this world, I yearn to see your face. I adore you, Abba. And I wish I could see your face right now. In Revelations 22, from verse 1 to 5, it says, And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb. And in the middle of the streets and on either side of the river was the tree of life, which bore 12 fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree were for, for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. Now listen carefully. They shall see his face, and his name shall be on their foreheads. There shall be no night there. They, they need no lamp nor light of the sun. For the Lord God gives them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. Amen. So this song is about meeting Jesus in that day. How do you picture that day to see the greatest love of your life that day? So it's a song in, in Spanish, but I will <clears throat> tell you the words in English first, and then I will sing it for Jesus. It says, just one word, just one prayer. When I stand before you in your presence, O oh Lord, I don't care where the table you make me sit or the color of my crown if I win it. Just one word, if I still have a voice left and if I manage to articulate it in your presence, I don't want to ask you questions, just a request. And if he can be alone with you, much better. Just let me look at you face to face and let me lose myself like a child in your gaze. Let a lot of time pass and no one say anything because I'm seeing the Lord face to face. May my memories drown in your gaze. I want to love you in silence and without words. And let a lot of time pass and no one stop me. Just let me look at you face to face. Just one word, just one prayer. When I stand before you in your presence, oh Lord, I don't care where at the table you make me sit or the color of my crown if I win it. Just let me look at you face to face, even if I fall melted in your gaze, defeated and on the ground trembling and breathless, I will still continue to look at you, my Savior. When I fall on my knees before your feet, let me cry close to your wounds. Let, and let a lot of time pass, and no one stop me. 
because I've been waiting for this moment all my life. Amen. I'm going to sing the song now. Solamente una palabra, solamente una oración, cuando llegue a tu presencia, oh Señor. No me importa en qué lugar de la mesa me haga sentar, ni el color de mi corona. Si la llego a ganar, solamente una palabra, si es que aún me queda voz y si logro articularla en tu presencia. No te quiero hacer preguntas, solo una petición. Y si puede ser a solas, mucho mejor. Solo déjame mirarte cara a cara y perderme como una niña en tu mirada. Y que pase mucho tiempo y que nadie diga nada porque estoy viendo al maestro cara a cara. Que se ahogue mi recuerdo en tu mirada. Quiero amarte en el silencio y sin palabras y que pase mucho tiempo y que nadie diga nada. Solo déjame mirarte cara a cara. Solamente una palabra Solamente una oración, cuando llegue a tu presencia, oh Señor, no me importa en qué lugar de la mesa me haga sentar, ni el color de mi corona, si la llego a ganar, solo... Déjame mirarte cara a cara, aunque caiga derretida en tu mirada. Derrotada y desde el suelo, temblorosa y sin aliento, aún te seguiré mirando. Mi maestro, cuando caiga ante tus plantas de rodillas, déjame llorar pegada a tus heridas y que pase mucho tiempo y que nadie me lo impida y que pase mucho tiempo y que nadie, nadie me lo impida que he esperado este momento toda mi Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Amen. Isn't that voice sweet? That's a sweet voice, I tell you. God bless you. That was a cappella, too. Amen. She does it so well. Thank you so much. You all can go down. Go right ahead, by all means. And thank you again, everyone. God bless you all. Let's just...
Try to see if we can get through this. Give him a hand. Go ahead. Give him a hand again. That's fine. Amen. How many of you have been broken in your life? Ah, uh, come on. There's got to be a bunch more use. I mean, I've been broken like more than once. I mean, I, I, I have my wife for 34 years, but I'll tell you, I got my heart broken before that a few times, I'm telling you. So all of you had a broken heart, right? How many have been broken before? Anybody? Now, sometimes we get broken because we make the mistake. Sometimes we get broken because fate may have it the way it is, like those who are broken in the Middle East right now. And sometimes God chooses to break us, right? And we got lots of, lots of examples along those lines, right? And there are times when we feel very, very tired of life. Isn't that true? Not just physically, but emotionally and spiritually. And this life we're living right now, there is so much brokenness going on that even in your own personal lives, you can sense it even in others as well. And sometimes it reciprocates back onto you as well, where you're living a life of this brokenness. I want to talk about brokenness today because I just sense in this world we're living right now, we're all experiencing some kind of brokenness in our personal lives. And what is God saying to us and what models do we have as an example to that that will help us to understand what that means? We feel tired all about our life. We lose appetite for everything. We lack motivation. We lack desire. Sometimes we're just unhappy with life. And I know I'm not speaking to everyone, and don't raise your hands, but I know I'm speaking to somebody here. Am I speaking to anybody here? Say amen. I'm speaking to all of us as well, because I can rest assured, your pastor goes into those lonely moments as well. He sure does, because life just seems to take its toll on everybody right now. Simone Biles, the most decorated gymnastist, shared about her brokenness. Isn't that true? She couldn't continue her program in the Olympics. And of course, this year, she, she's just soaring because she took time away. All right? Naomi Osaka, number one tennis player in the world, also shared about her brokenness. Isn't that true? Right? And we see the result today as well. And Hollywood stars and sports athletes, and they all are experiencing some kind of trauma in their lives and brokenness where all of them are having to take break or to emphasize how it's affecting them as well. Isn't that true? And so in us, and most of us, we don't convey to others that brokenness. So as a result, we end up with what? With, with mental illness, we end up with, with overstressed over, over out, and we end up with suicide as well. Brokenness can actually lead you to suicide also. But that's not my message today. My message is one of hope for you today. Because they are all people who are gifted with special abilities in this world. And yet, whether they're rich, whether they're successful in some sports uh, arena, or whether in Hollywood, superstar, they all are broken in some way. But what's the difference for most of them compared to you and I? They don't seem to understand the brokenness is within themselves, but there's somebody they can turn to who can mend those pieces. And that's where the difference comes with all of us today. And that's where I want to speak to your heart as well. Because it's in brokenness. Brokenness is what I long for. Do you understand that that's what God wants us to understand, what brokenness means to all of us? All right? There are many Bible examples of struggles and brokenness that we'll talk about. And I'll give you two examples in a little while. One of them is King David. One of them is Elijah. Another one is Job. And there are so many other factors there as well. In fact, they all were broken. The prophets of old, Abraham, he was broken because he was old. Isn't that true? Elijah was broken and he was even suicidal. Joseph was, was, was broken and he was abused, sold off into Egypt. Job was literally broken and went bankrupt. Moses was broken, had a speech problem. And not just that, disobeyed God where he wouldn't even see the promised land. All right, Gideon was broken and was afraid. Samson was broken, and do I say a womanizer? Look what, look what happened to him. He lost his hair. Then he lost his life. Broken. Noah, broken. Even after replenishing the earth, became a drunk and caused so much effects on his people. Jeremiah, broken, thought he was too young. Why me, Lord? And we can go on with Jonah, broken. Didn't want to go to Nineveh to help based on God's command to him. Broken, end up where? In the, whale of a belly, in the belly of a whale. Isn't that true? <laughs> Naomi, broken, a widower. Right? Peter, broken when Christ was crucified. In fact, he sliced the soldier's ear. He was so broken that Christ was being, was being, uh, was being reprimanded and being uh, charged. And after what did he do? Broken because he denied him three times. Broken to pieces. And Zacchaeus, broken, right? Was small and, and money hungry. 
The disciples, all of them, broken. In fact, they, most of them were sleeping when Christ was being crucified when in, the, in the Garden of Gethsemane. And so we are today talking about our own lives, right? How we experience brokenness in our own lives as well. So let me just talk about what you have in your hands right now. In the midst of that brokenness, you started off being a whole person. Is that true? You were all a whole. When God made you in his image, he made you a whole person. When you're a baby, you were a whole person. Not true. When you were, when you were a toddler, a, a teenager, you're pretty whole right now. You're pretty whole. Okay, you all haven't experienced much life that we all, all the folks have who is probably struggling through some of those journeys and trying to teach my young son and daughter, don't repeat some of the things I did so you wouldn't have to face some of the struggles I went through and my wife went through, right, to get where we are today. But we all have to go through struggles, isn't that true? But that crayon you're holding in your hand right now, that represents you. It's whole, isn't it true? And I want you to hold on to it right now and look at that. And you got a piece of paper in your hands. I want you all to start with that piece of paper. I want you all to start drawing me a nice, a nice art of any kind. And I'm probably going to post some of these art. If you can't draw, just draw scribbles. Okay? But give me something on this art. Try to, try to put some kind of picture or framework on this thing. If you want to write some letters, do so. Okay? You got, you got 30, you got one minute. Okay? Now, if you, if you want, if you're online, you're not being a part of this exercise right now, but get a piece of paper. Get a crayon if you can in your home and if you're online right now. And just take it and just start to draw something for me. You know, maybe you can, you can draw a sun, you know, on the earth with some, with some ocean and water. Okay, maybe you can draw a cross and show Christ came, okay. Right, you, pretty well in the next few seconds I'm going to have you, you know. So maybe you, know, you, you can't complete it right now, but I want you to stop right now. Stop. Stop whatever you're doing. Put your crayon up. Put your crayon up. Stop. You need this crayon to finish the artwork. God needs you to finish the plans he has for you as well. But now I want you to do me a favor. I want you to break your crayon. Break it. Break the crayon. Break it in half. The crayon is now useless, yes? It's not. Your brokenness doesn't mean you're useless. Your brokenness doesn't mean you can't finish the job. Your brokenness doesn't mean God can't still use you. Now, with your broken crayon, I want you to finish the art with one half or the other. Because guess what? Even though you're broken, you can still work for God. Even though you're broken, you can still finish the art piece he has planned for you in your own life. Even in your brokenness, you can still reach out and touch somebody's life. And God can still use you for whoever you are. Notice that even though it's broken, it's still performing. And that's what God does in every one of our lives. We go through seasons of hurt, seasons of, of pain, seasons of brokenness. But while you're going through all of that, God is doing what? He's still using the colors of your life. Amen? He's shaping you. He's grinding you down. Right? And he's still building character. Right? In fact, Romans chapter 5 talks about that, right? Perseverance builds what? Character. And character builds hope. He's still shaping you in your brokenness. And that crayon you have in your hands, it can still give artistic color. Now, I want you all in, in the course of this sermon today, finish your artwork for me and give it to me at the end. If I see, I'll frame some, I'll put some up. You know, we'll have a little laughter with it. I already got mine. Look, I got a cross. I got a cross and I got the ocean with the sun shining, okay? And I'm not done yet because this sun is not the S-U-N. This is going to be the S-O-N shining in my life. That's my wonderful, wonderful testimony to all of you as well. So let's talk about a couple of examples, okay? Because what is brokenness? What really is brokenness? Brokenness is a spiritual state that captures God's attention. You hear me? For the Christian I'm talking about, the believer. For those who trust God. For those who walk with God, okay? Right? Brokenness is a spiritual state, go to the next slide, that captures God's attention. It provides us with a deeper understanding of ourselves and our relationship with Him. It's in your brokenness that you need to touch and reach somebody. Most of us become secluded, we become isolated, but for you, a follower of Christ, it's in the deep realm of your brokenness that you cry out to God. And that's when you get God's most attention. That's when God, you know that God is there. Oh, God, I need you right now. Oh, God, I call upon you right now. It's in that brokenness state from a spiritual perspective 
that we can have the depth of God's understanding and God's love. And that's why I'm calling it broken to pieces, not P-I-E-C-E-S, but broken so you can have the peace of God ruling in your heart, your mind, and your spirit. Brokenness is God's eyes, in God's eyes, is being so crushed by sin and darkness of the world that we recognize there is no place to turn but God. Now let's talk about David's life. King David... His life in, in 1 Samuel and 2 Samuel, you see it outlay there for you as well. Brokenness is a perfect example in David right now. David was a man after God's own heart. God said to, 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 to Samuel, go and anoint David to be the king in 1 Samuel chapters 12. You'll see it there where God said in verse 17, guess what, David? Saul, I'm going to replace you because David is a man after my own heart. It's like when you all got transformed to God's presence and became a believer in Christ, you had all the fire in you and God would have spoken to the angels and would have told the devil himself, leave my son and daughter alone. They are people after my own heart. Isn't that true? And then not too long afterwards, right, you, you kind of shame God because you may have slipped up, done something wrong, caused some kind of brokenness to happen in your heart. Well, David is the story right now because in this God saying, David is a man after my own heart, this David, you all know what he did, right? What did David do? He committed adultery when he became king, right? And then he did what? He killed him man. He killed Uriah, Bathsheba's husband. Wait a second. This David? He had to be confronted by the prophet Samuel, right? And it's in that confrontation, David became broken. It's when God confronts us, no matter how that might look, it's when God does what? It's when God speaks to our heart to bring us back into a place. Thank God for a loving God. Thank God for a forgiving God. Thank God for a gracious God. Thank God who doesn't give up because he knows our destiny is sure. He has plans for you no matter what you're going through, no matter what you've done. There is hope as a believer that we can always go back to the cross and God can mend those broken hearts. I think it was Deacon Olo who sent us a little a WhatsApp this week. He says, he says, if you want God to mend your heart, you've got to give him the pieces. If you've got, if you want God to mend your heart, you've got to give him the pieces. Let's continue on because David could have offered God, you know, all kind of sacrifices for forgiveness, right? Because we're reminded in, later on in 2 Samuel chapter 12, right? We see the beauty of brokenness because David broke down and became what? Became humbled and repentant. Didn't brag up on his pride. Can I say to you? Because in Psalms 51, we read earlier on, and with Psalms 34 as well, Psalms 34 from verses, uh, I think it was verses, uh, our theme verses, verses uh, 18. But in Psalms 51, you'll see a cross-reference there between 16 and 17. David, in that brokenness, before when God was restoring him as king, he was running for his life. And it's in that Psalms 51 when he recognized his sinfulness what did he do? He wrote Psalms 51. And in that verse, 16 to 7, he says this. He says, Lord, he says, you do not delight in sacrifice or I would bring it. You don't take pleasure in burnt offerings because my sacrifice, O God, is a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. God will not despise. Many people miss this truth. I hope you don't. Rather than repent, they tried to do what? Clean up their act. Cover it up. What did David do when, Bathsheba, when, he, when he sinned against Bathsheba? He was trying to cover up the act, so he did what? He killed Uriah. How many of us go through this state, whether it's through sinfulness or some brokenness, and we try to cover it up? We give more, or we pray more, or we beg God more, without even having a contrite spirit or broken heart. Today, I want to say to you, in your brokenness, it's got to be contrite. It's got to be a broken heart before the Lord. That, Lord, I have done wrong. Or, Lord, something has happened where I don't feel this, 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 this sense of adoration before you. Help me in my weakness, Lord, to come back to you and bring me and restore the joy of your salvation in me. Because in, in religious activity, it doesn't make you holy. Are you hearing me? External religious activity cannot replace internal heartfelt contrition. You're raising up hands. I asked you to all raise hands just now. And I asked you to repeat after me and to ask God's blessing. That doesn't make it 
powerful unless it's intentional in your brokenness state of heart before the Lord. Amen. You can shout hallelujah all you want. Amen. You can speak in tongues all you want. Amen. In fact, I have a, a pastor friend right now. He's the biggest tongue-speaking Pentecostal pastor I know. And guess where he is right now? He's in jail right now. He's in jail right now. I won't tell you why. I won't give you any more details. But here he is on the pulpit for how many years now, speaking in tongues, trying to be holy, and now he's serving time. Because you can be religious and pompous in your own way. And David had that choice, but David chose to be submissive. Many times what we see as our biggest regrets, failures and mistakes become what God uses in most of our lives. God transforms our brokenness into something more beautiful than we can even imagine. He takes our mess and creates a masterpiece. He turns our mess into a message. He turns our test into a testimony. He turns that mess into a masterpiece. God is the artist and our lives are his canvases. What will you allow him to create in your broken pieces? As you have seen already in the crayons. Now let's continue on because I probably won't even get the light until next week. But let me, let me read this to you. He, God does not want us to be broken hearted. Listen carefully now. Right? God does not want us to be broken hearted, but to have broken hearts. You got the difference? He doesn't want us to be broken hearted. Stressed out and worried as humans in this world and looking at the things that are affecting us and imposing on our minds and our beings that we can't do any better and look how bad the world is. Look at the war happening right now. How am I going to get over? How am I going to succeed? I can't pay my bills. I can't buy groceries because we are first focusing and looking at the wrong things or the wrong circumstance. You're looking at the size of your mountain, but you aren't looking at the size of your God. And look what it says here. God doesn't want us brokenhearted, but to have broke hearts and contrite spirits so that he can take the reins of our lives and guide us with his love to receive all the promised blessings there is for all of us. Amen? Many of you have already overcome, but there's more to come if this world continues on. We will experience trouble in this world. Trust me, all right? A broken heart may appear worthless to those afflicted, but if we offer our heart to God in the hope of repair and nourishment, then it will be replaced with one of wholeness. Now let me, I'm going to skip Elijah. As you know, Elijah went to King Ahab. God allowed him to destroy all the enemies of Baal, right? The story there in 1 Kings chapter 18, I think it is. You'll see his story there as well unfolding for us with Elijah. And then Elijah, after he had all this great success, remember Elijah is the one who, who walked with God, never died, right? Elijah is the one who was taken to the mountaintop and God said, come and see my glory, right? And there were, he wasn't in the fire, he wasn't in the earthquake, but God was in the still small voice. This is Elijah I'm talking about. And this Elijah was afraid of Je Jezebel. Jezebel, the wife of Ahab. Because when she found out that Elijah had, had, had destroyed all of their enemies and destroyed all the gods of Baal, remember, remember that experience when, when Elijah told them, Bring, go, go sacrifice for me and, and fill the, your altar with water and pray to your God and keep shouting and, and bring fire, bring fire. Remember the story there in First Kings, I think it's the 19, wherever it is, right? Anyways, the story ends like this because Elijah got so scared of Jezebel, who threatened him in 1 Kings chapter 19. I'm going to kill you. Huh? You go, but I, you go and tell him, okay? I'm going to kill him. Now, if anybody tells you they're going to kill you, what are you going to do? If I see you in church next Sunday, I'm coming after you. Guess what? Who's going to stay online and watch live stream to you? Who's coming to church? Huh? I know where you live. Well, Elijah got so depressed and so scared, he had to run for his life. And he had to hide. And the beautiful thing about this is this is that God recognized in your brokenness the hope he has in you, no matter what you're going through. That's the good news. And God knew the plans he had for Elijah, just like King David. And God recognized that he's going to minister and reach out. He sent an angel once. He sent an angel twice. In fact, God will send an angel to restore your brokenness. And he'll come himself through his son Jesus. And he'll come not just once, not just twice. He'll keep coming again 
and again and again. That's the God you serve, I hope. And if you don't, that's the God I hope you're hearing about today. There is a God of hope, love, joy, and peace in this season, and he's just for you and I, no matter what you're going through in this life. Let me wrap it up with a couple of other examples for you as well that, that um, I want to just finish off with Elijah here. Put up the next screen for Elijah for me, would you mind? All right, Elijah, right? If once is not enough, God comes to us again. If it doesn't work for the first time, he comes a second time. If it doesn't work for the second time, then the angel would do what? Have come the third time. It shows that healing is a process. It is a journey. It is a life journey for all of us as well. And this is how God works. If once is not enough, it shows that God is really healing all of us through this journey of faith, all right? So let me put up this little slide for you. So what distinguished Elijah and David? Answer me. What distinguished Elijah and David? What distinguishes you and the superheroes and all those who are rich and famous? Because every one of them might look like they're invincible. Come on, David, a man after one good heart, he's invincible. Elijah, a man who didn't even die but walked with God straight to heaven, he are, they are invincible. How could they fail God? How could they? Now, what about you and I? How many of you are invincible? None. What kind of church is this? Not even one person? You mean your pastor is invincible? Hmm. But the next slide reminds us what that looks like, right? Because it's not about invincibility. Because Elijah and David were not invincible, right? What did they have? Faith. They were faithful. Faithful before the Lord. And I want to leave that thought with you. God wants you to be faithful. What distinguished them is their faithfulness. In your brokenness, in spite of what's going on, whom do you blame? Or do you recognize there's still God working on you? There's still God helping you through the process in your brokenness. And unless you're like Job, it really isn't a reality for all of us to blame God for what happens in our lives because we're the ones who make those choices. And those choices sometimes end up being a consequence to us. Amen? So let's go to the last slide. I have a couple of more. Just go to the next slide. Your breaking is on the brink of a breakthrough. Hallelujah. I see five people receive that. Your breaking, whatever it is, whatever you're going through right now, your breaking is on the brink of a breakthrough. You've got to stay faithful. You've got to stay faithful to the Lord. And whatever you're going through, and I know you all are going through stuff. Everybody's going through. I'm going through it as well. But whatever you're going through, okay, faithfulness is what God has given to you as well. Because the, your breakthrough is, is coming. And let me do the last one. Give me the next slide. I think it's the last one coming up here, right? Here is the crayon color. So your crayon, again, here it is right here. Your crayons has colors. you agree? And here are what the colors are, okay? Your crayons. Look at the colors right now. Purple represents what? Say it for me. Say it for me, come on. Purple represents what? The robe the soldiers made Jesus wear. Hallelujah, amen. Who's got a purple one? Paper crayon. There's yours, okay? Who's got a red one? I got a red one. It reminds us of the blood of Jesus. Who's got a black one? Black one. Black crayon? Black crayon reminds us of the dark tomb Jesus was in for three days. Who's got a pink crayon? Pink? Pink? No? Pink one reminds us of all the people crying when Jesus was dead, including you and I. Next slide. Orange. Who's got orange? That's a favorite color. Oh, wow. That's a favorite one, eh? Orange. Okay. Reminds us of the sunrise on Easter morning when Jesus rose to... Woo! All you orange people, there is hope. Amen? All right. Then what about white? Reminds of the angels that rolled the stone away. Somebody say, rolled the stone away. What about green? Reminds of the garden where Mary first saw, amen, and yellow. And that's, that's Nancy's song. When we see Jesus face to face, all your brokenness will be gone. All your suffering will be gone. All your pain will be gone. And there'll be no more war, no more hate, no more judgment. Amen. My prayer for you is that we will receive this today and know that your brokenness is because God wants you to have a broken and a contrite spirit. One like David, one like Elijah, like Job and all the others we talked about, like the Jeremiah's, like the disciples. And may God give you his grace 
in this moment. Amen? Bow your hearts in prayer. Jesus himself puts it this way. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Or in the NLT, blessed are the broken in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of God. Matthew 5. Through brokenness, we comprehend that we are finite people in tremendous need of an infinite Savior. Somebody say amen. And it's Jesus who was organizing on the cross for you and I, Father. Jesus hung on the cross, and he was broken, wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, God, today, we are healed. Healed from all brokenness. And I pray this reality will come to those who don't know you today as their Lord and Savior. I appeal to you online and here as well that you will raise your hands so high in your heart that God will see it. I don't have to see it, but you raise your hands so high that God can mend that broken heart of yours. And he can give you the peace. When you give him the pieces, he will give you his peace. My prayer for you today, that you will know the Prince of Peace. That he will heal your brokenness and heal your destitute situation and heal whatever you're looking for in this life. The blessing of God be upon you. Even now, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. amen. All right. Listen, I love these young people. You guys get up there and let's sing our song. Amen. Let's finish off with a wonderful praise. God bless you as you go today. For those who have to leave, I'll meet you on the outside briefly. But for the rest of you, please stay. It won't be long. Probably about 45 minutes maximum. And then we'll have some fellowship downstairs. We got some sandwiches for you, okay? So let's jump right in. It's over here. Let's sing our song. Hallelujah. Let's stand together and sing it with, this, with our worship team. Amen. Hallelujah. Remember, don't be broken because your breakthrough is coming. Amen. Let's sing it together. The Lord bless you and keep you. Hallelujah. Lord bless you. Lord bless you. And keep you.
God keep you. Amen. Go have a strong week, not a not a weak week. Amen. Thank you for your blessings today of service. Go in God's grace. Amen. Hang around for a bit and we'll see those who are leaving on the outside. God bless you. Keep playing. Thank you, brother. What a wonderful service. Praise God. A little taste of this one.